Hi guys, today we're going to be doing this nice 3D transition using one or two Cocodove tools. I'm still in the reactor zone. Let's get to it. Bring in cross dissolve from the fusion transitions. In the edit page, drag it in between these two clips. Note that these two clips, I already created a handle for both of them. So you see that there, then this one, I created a handle here like that. So this cross dissolve I dragged in here, I need to increase the duration to two. I do that under inspector and I click on this to open the transition in fusion, extend the media out here, disconnect it and delete cross dissolve. So the first thing we do before you even touch media in one, we bring in a fast noise node, drag that to the left viewer. Under inspector for fast noise node, we go to color. We increase the alpha for color one, go to noise, increase contrast all the way. Then we click on an empty part of the node grid, deselecting every other node, shift space bar, bring in a bitmap node. Connect the output of the fast noise to the input of the bitmap node. Drag the bitmap node to the right viewer. We have that. We go to inspector for bitmap. We change the channel to luminance. We have practically the same thing we have here, but we want to make this blurred edges sharper. So I'm going to drag the slider down all the way so it becomes sharper there. So we're going to use this to now drive the 3D shape. So we click on an empty part of the node grid, press shift space bar. Type S trace create. We pick this, we add that. Then we bring in another tool, shape, shape create. Pick this and we add that. So we have this. So we make a copy of this, copy, and we paste that here. I'm going to go here, bring in a background node, make the color white and connect this to the background node. Then we can connect the background node to that. Okay. Okay. We need to create a copy of this bitmap node. I right click on this. I copy it and I go here. I paste an instance of it. And I'll connect the output of this to the bitmap. So we have this in the middle. And then we connect this to a background node. Let's bring this background node here and change the color to, to white. Okay. And connect this instance of the bitmap to this. For this instance, we want to make it an invert of this bitmap. So I go to this instance of the bitmap, right click on this invert and click the instance. Note that when you say paste an instance, you're essentially making a copy of this such that any change you make here will will be made here. But if I want to decouple any of the settings from there, right click on it and click the instance. Okay. I've de-instanced the invert. So I can click invert and I've connected that to that. And I connect this background to this S trace create. Right. So we go to shape create, drag that to this left viewer. We go to the shape create, drag that to the right viewer. So we see they are both inverse versions of each other. So we go to the first shape create. Let's make this extrude to be 0 0.1. 0 0.1 should be fine. Then we go to here. We make this 0 0.1. Now we want this to be a bit shiny. So I'm going to go to effects, go to templates, go to expand fusion, then click on shaders, drag Chrome shader in here and connect that to shape create 3D and connect this also to shape create 3D, second shape create 3D. So we have this going. But I want the image in front of this to be the image, the media in. So I'm going to bring the media in here and I'm going to use the same bitmap to um, cut it out. So I'm going to bring the merge node, bring in a background node. Reduce the alpha, connect this to the background of this merge, connect media in one to this foreground and connect this bitmap to the bitmap input here. If I drag this to the left viewer, you see we have 
a cut out of that. We do the same thing for this one below here. So you can just simply copy this and then um, paste it here. We rearrange it like down, down here, pull that up here and connect this to that. We have this here. And we connect this bitmap to the bitmap input here. I should pull it apart so you can see it. Okay. So we have this going in both of each other. It's bringing up an image plane for each of them. Bring an image plane here and an image plane here. Connect this to the image plane. Connect that to the image plane. Now we bring in a merge node for each of them. One merge node here, another merge node here. Connect this to this merge node. Connect this image plane to this merge node. Connect the shape create to the merge node. Connect this to the merge node. Now for this one, we go to transform for, for each of the image planes, go to transform. Then for the Z plane, we add 0 0.001. For this one, go to transform 001. Great. You can see if we now drag this to the viewer, you see we have the image in front of that. I'll drag this to the right viewer, and the image in front of that. So for each of them, let's bring in a transform 3D node. This one to shift space bar transform 3D. And then we bring in a merge node and connect this to that, connect that to that. Bring this in the middle here. Now to this merge 3D, let's bring in another transform node. Then we bring in a renderer 3D node. Connect that. Pull back here. So now we have this and connect this renderer. Now let's pull this here like that. Then I bring in media into down here. But before we go to that media into, let's sort this out. I go to this first transform, connect it to this. I go to pivot for the, for the Y value. I give it a minus 0 0.4. And I click on this too. I go to pivot and connect. I say minus 0 0.4. Bring that here. So you see that rotating there. That's what we want. Go to this, I rotate that, we want that. Click on this, right click on X, modify with anim curves. Go to modifiers, I change this easing to sign, sign, change this to 90, because we want to just rotate from for 90 down there. Then I want this to happen like one point, let's say 1.25. And then um, we go to transform 3D2 for the X value, right click on it, modify with anim curves, modifiers, set this to 90, set the easing, the easing to sign, and that to sign is out to sign. Then you set this to 1.25. I want this to now start like 0.2N. Okay. And um, if we go to Renderer 3D, we drag this to the viewer. Let's close the effects tab. You see it's not, yeah, it's pretty small compared to, so I use this transform 3D and I type for the Z value, I, I type 1.321 and that fits it in perfectly. Okay, so if we play this out now, you'll see the blocks fall out. Beautiful stuff. But it looks like they are both too close to each other. I'm going to delay this a little bit. Okay. I'm going to delay the second one a little bit. So I'm going to go to modifiers for this one. I'm going to set this to 0.3. And uh, let's play it back again, because I want this to come down com almost completely before that starts coming down. Something like that. 
and I think they are too thick. So I'm going to go to shape create 3D. I'm going to set this to 0 0.05 and this to 0 0.05. Okay, that's better. And I'm going to go to this transform the modifier, set this to 0 0.35. And let's play it and see if it completely goes down. Good. Let's see that fall, fall down. Great. All right. So we have that, but we need to put an image in the background. So I'm going to put a, bring in a merge node. Bam. Connect this renderer to the background of merge 2 and connect media into to the foreground. Actually, it should be the other way around. So I'm gonna click on this, right click on it and swap input. So this would be, this would be in the background because it should be here. So I drag this to the viewer, you see this image in the background. And um, you're practically done with this wipe. One more thing, raise media out, bring that here, connect to this here and bam, we have, a, we have the transition. Just to make this a little cleaner, I'm going to drag this out, hold down Alt on the keyboard to create a pipe node and click on there, drag this here and connect this to that. And so we have this going. Great. If we go to the edit page, go here and play it. Okay, one of that thing, you see these artifacts here, we need to correct that. So I'm going to click on here, stop it, go to open the transition. I need to change renderer 3D to open GL renderer. And then we go back to the edit page. We'll play it back again. You see it's cleaner now. Great. We, as always, we can package this into um, a transition by simply to drag this up a bit, drag this down. I need to point out a few things. Note that we can always go to fast noise and change the seat. If we change the seat, if I go here, you'll see that this changes, the shape of the cutout changes. So you can make this unique to you, however you want it to be. Yeah, and um, that basically is that. So if we if we go here and select all of this and make it into a transition, right click on this and create a macro, I can go to fast noise, expand it, collapse image under noise, I'll go to seat and I can label it wipe pattern. You can go here and save as group. We go to fusion, templates, edit, transitions. Let's call it 3D drop and save it. And um, close it. If we go to edit page, if we decide to delete this, and Go to search for a 3D drop. You can drag this in here. Let's make it two seconds. And um, we complete. And we see we have beautiful stuff. Guys, thanks for joining me on this one. I have the transition below. You can download it and do with it what you will. Have fun, guys. Thanks for joining me. Do like and subscribe. Take care. Cheers. Bye.